William Byron gets win number three. Ross Chastain and Kyle Larson tangle again for the third time in four weeks. And, well, let's talk about the rest of Darlington, too. Coming up next. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Hope you're doing good today. All right, Fast Willie B. William Byron gets win number three on the season. That is the most he has ever had in one single season in his NASCAR career so far. And it sets him up nicely for the playoffs because if you look at the playoff points, when the regular season ends, he would be the points leader with those three wins despite the penalty where he lost, I think, four or I mean, maybe like five to ten uh, playoff points. He has now made more, more than made up for those with these three wins. So good race for him, good win for him. It is also somewhat a little bit of redemption from last year when he was uh, leading the race and him and Joey Logano got tangled up. Of course, he uh, he gave Joey Logano the first bump, and then Joey Logano came back and had no problem giving him another bump back to win that race. So he gets some redemption uh, for that one, as he was really close to winning it last year as well. But gets the win in this one, but his win also came at you know somebody else's cost because somebody else was wrecked in this one as well. So let's get into that. The wreck, of course, I'm referring to is the guy that drove it in there way too deep. Got his car in there way too deep. It wasn't even the first time he did it today, of course. You know I'm talking about Martin Trix Jr. in the number 19. He drove the car in there way too deep, got out of control, got loose. It pushed up and ran into Joey Logano. Wait, what's that? We're not mad at Martin Trix Jr.? He's not the one we're talking about, even though it was the same exact wreck as Ross Chastain? So we're, we're mad at Ross for doing the exact same thing Martin Trix Jr. did, but we're not mad at Truex. Got you. My humblest apologies. I've just been informed I didn't get my script. I've just been informed we're actually mad about Ross Chastain running up and catching Kyle Larson, going for the win, going for the lead, doing the exact same thing that Martin Truex Jr. did. Uh, so this is this week's, I guess, Ross controversy. I mean, look, in my opinion, the guy was going for the win. Yes, he overdrove it. Yes, he got into Kyle Larson. If you're Kyle Larson, yes, you're going to be mad because, like I said, this is the third week out of four that you've had some type of contact with Ross Chastain with race-winning speed, or he ended your day, however you want to say it. So, look, I get it. If you're you're mad, if, if you're Kyle Larson, I'm a Kyle Larson fan. I'm getting tired of it. Every time we have race-winning speed, something happens. It's getting old to me, too. But that being said, if I look if I take the fandom out of it, if I look at the move, the guy is going for the win. I understand it. And it also shows the media bias, right? Martin Trex Jr. did the exact same thing. He did it twice. He did it one time to Ross Chastain at the end of stage two. And the second time he did it, he took out Joey Logano. So he does he does the same thing at the same racetrack, a racetrack that's hard to pass at. But nobody is saying a word about Martin Trex Jr. running over two people in this race. Then you look at Ross Chastain, and Ross Chastain does the same thing that Martin Truex Jr. does. All of a sudden, it's the end of the world because, you know, the media has spun this narrative that uh, Ross Chastain is too aggressive. He's bad for the sport. Meanwhile, he's getting more views and more looks for people in the sport, period. Uh, so it is what it is. You're either going to like the Ross Chastain or you're going to hate Ross Chastain. But like I said, he gets treated completely differently for the exact same things that other drivers do. And I will I will, I stand and die on that hill because that's just the way it is. He does the exact same things that other drivers do, but he gets, uh, he gets so much flack for it compared to those drivers. So that was the big controversy of the race. Let me know down in the comments below. Go ahead. If you disagree with me, let me know down in the comments. If you agree with me, please let me know down in the comments because I'm pretty sure tons of people are going to uh, tell me I'm a moron. But uh, aside from that, let's get to a good race, a bad race. Good race, of course, for William Byron. He gets win number three. Kevin Harvick, uh, with a damaged race car, gets uh, second place. Chase Elliott, sort of out of nowhere, gets third place. Brad Keselowski had a good run all day. Nice fourth place for him. Bubba Wallace in fifth place. Uh, there was some controversy over his placement at that last caution uh, because they said he advanced his spot. Uh, same thing with Harrison Burton. Uh, nice run for Harrison Burton. Harrison Burton really needed this one, uh, run. A nice top six for him. Uh, Kyle Busch with a seventh place finish. Uh, he probably would have won this race, in my opinion, uh, if he hadn't overshot his pit stall on that last pit stop. Because after those first two wrecked, I think he probably had the next fastest car. 
Uh, it probably would have been a tie between him and Byron. Would have been interesting at the very least. Justin Haley needed this 8th place finish as well. Ryan Blaney in ninth. Christopher Busher in 10th. Todd Gilliland with a nice 11th. Denny Hamlin, terrible day, but salvages a 12th out of it because of all the attrition. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. spun out at one point. Uh, had a flat tire and was sitting on uh, the apron, but he recovers to 13th. Christopher Bell, 14th. And Ryan Priest uh, in your 15th position. Now let's take a look at who had a bad race. Bad race for Daniel Suarez. He looked really good in the first stage and then just fell off after that. Was never able to get back into it. Martin Trex Jr. already mentioned his problems for the day. Uh, uh, Ross Chastain, uh, also not good. So just a bad day for Trackhouse. Ross Chastain, 29th there. And Josh Berry, uh, he just look, looked like he never could get comfortable in the car. Bad day for him in 30th place. And you also saw there, BJ McLeod was 32nd, so although he didn't get the finish he want, wanted, it was still a really cool day because they had the uh, podcast party bus, and I still think it's really cool uh, that YouTubers sponsored a NASCAR Cup Series car, so shout out to them, even though uh, it wasn't mentioned on the broadcast that I saw. I thought it was one of the really cool storylines, and I uh, was hoping it would get mentioned by Fox, but at the end of the day, it did not. Although Fox did mention uh, that Darlington has uh, bologna burgers, so that was pretty cool as well. Uh, all right, that is all I got for you on this one. Uh, Ross Chastain is still leading the points, by the way. Uh, the guy that can't drive and all that. He's still leading the points, by the way. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not going to do the points rundown, but I did want to mention that. So, yeah, if you got a question, comment, leave it down in the comment section. If you made it this far, feel free to subscribe down below. All your subscriptions mean a lot to this channel. And if you're already subscribed, you know I appreciate you guys as well. And other than that, thanks for your time. Peace. Oh, yeah, we have merch. Uh, here is the merch, and I will put... Here's the T-shirt that we got right now. We're op hoping to add some more by the end of the month, and, yeah, here is the uh, the uh, link will be down in the description. All right. <laughs> so bad at this. I'm just getting used to the, uh, to the O-plugs here. <laughs>